Without further ado, Devit, come on up. Well, thank you. Thank you for the applause. Thank you for the invitation. My name is David, and you will say like David. It's David. Why is he saying David? <laughs> so I was born and raised in Puerto Rico. All that I heard was David for 40 years of my life. So five years ago, I decided to move to the US for a work opportunity. I'll touch on it later. And they told me, well, David, David, David. I'm like, I'm David. I'm David. There's a lot of Davids in the Boston Scientific. Can you call me David? So they started calling me David. So I'm David. But if you call me David, I don't mind. Okay? And you will say Soler Rosado. Why two last names? Where people that are from Latin America know that normally we use our dad's last name and our mom's last name. So I am David Soler Rosado. My kids are Rodrigo Soler and then my wife's last name, which is Cruzado. So my wife didn't change her last, it's a mess. <laughs> <laughs> and it was a mess when I moved here yeah, to the US. I live in Texas. And it was a mess because then they started calling my kids a different last name. They changed my Rosado to Soler because they saw Soler was my middle name. So again, I, I am David Soler Rosado. To keep it short, I have David Soler in my signature just to, to create less trouble. So I'd like to start with my story, uh, and I encourage you, everyone here, to start developing your leadership story. There's a lot of books, articles. Uh, the Harvard Business Review has a nice article about developing your leadership story. And your leadership story is the things that made you the leader that you are. All of you are leaders right now. You're here because you're leaders. You're going to become more leaders as you continue to advance your career, as you finish the medical sales college. You're going to join a medical sales company, and hopefully you're going to be territory managers, field sales associates, clinical specialists, regional managers, directors, vice presidents. Your experiences in life are the ones that are gonna forge the type of leader you are today and tomorrow. Now, your story is gonna be different today than it's gonna be in 20 years or 25 years. There's bad things that happen to us in life that are gonna forge that experience. There's good things that are gonna happen in life that are gonna forge that experience. I is what they say, and Marisa, you can maybe tell me I'm BS here, but I'm what they say, a people person, right? I, 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 like, <laughs> I, like, I like to lead people, but I care about people. I care about what is important to you, what is important to your family. Because at the end, you go to work so many hours for a company, at least you want to work for a company that takes care of you and that want to appreciate what you do besides work. So this is part of my family here. I'm not gonna go to every picture, but my mom, my, my sister are there. That's a beautiful picture I have from them there. That's an older picture. That's the picture they want me to show. They're older now. Um, <laughs> that's my dad. My dad always told me, you're gonna be the leader of this family. You're gonna be in sales. You're gonna lead because I'm gonna die young. I'm like, Papa, don't say that. Well, it was true. At 65 years old, he passed away and I became like the leader of the family. And those experiences, I always think about them because even from a younger age, she was telling me, you're gonna leave, you're gonna leave the family. Uh, not because of default, because of what happened maybe, but still today, my family calls me when every situation, every problem there is. Uh, this is my wife, Swania, which was a highlight of a, a newspaper of super moms because she would be the VP right now talking to you all if she hadn't left her career to with the kids because both of them had some uh, conditions that require her to leave her job. So my daughter has arthritis, she, she was eight year old. So you're all learning about joints. Yeah. She's uh, diagnosed with rheumatoid arthritis when she was uh, 18 months old. And she's nine now, she's been doing chemotherapy for joints, biologic drugs for joints. And my son was diagnosed with Asperger, autism high functioning. Again, it's not a pity story. But all of you have different experiences like that, that will force the leader you are today. That doesn't mean that because I love people and I take care of people that I don't assume risk or it's a pity story. I will jump off a parachute, I will get in a boxing ring. By the way, I got my butt kicked that day, but I have a picture of me throwing a punch. Um, I did a stand-up comedy a few years ago, part of my bucket list. I did a half marathon, never done one before. And I'm very passionate about my island, so every time there's something happening there, I will get into a plane when the hurricane hit and help them. I will go on march for the inequalities and injustices. So that's a little bit about who I am. Any questions of me, my life, or my past, my family? 
what makes you, what made you uh, take the decision of being part of medical sales? That's a good question. And I will touch a little bit about it in the next few slides, but to address it now, I, I was in pharma and great experience, but I was not seeing the impact, right? I would sell Viagra, great, Viagra. Everyone was having sex with Viagra because they couldn't have an erection before that, but I didn't see the outcome. Now if with Boston Scientific, we can have an implant that we really make an impact fast. Right now with Boston Scientific, we can sell a device that can have people, you know, that were not able to go to the bathroom because of the prostate disease or because of incontinence. We have an implant that can fix them. It's not about a prescription. It's not about waiting for IMS data to show me that that doctor was using my products. It's about having a solution that you can see the impact, being in the OR, being able to guide those doctors, to help them, to educate, to help patients. That's why I moved. Uh, what made you want to get into sales? I, I think I always wanted to be into sales. That's a good question. My dad was in sales. My dad was a businessman. And I was always selling stuff. When I was in high school, I always had money, not because I was rich. My wife, my, my mom was a hardworking uh, mom, my dad as well. But I always asked my mom, mom, can you buy some jewelry for me? And I can sell it in school. And I was selling clothing, <laughs> uniforms, jewelry, all the time since I was like 14 years old. And I always knew I wanted to be in sales. Thank you so much for being here. It's really you inspiring are. to hear about your family and in the end when we go to work for a company it kind of feels like that um what kind of um skills or like characteristics in the person do you look for when you interview them very good question what kind of characteristics do i look when i'm interviewing someone i like the greed i like the determination we were talking earlier today john and i the ability of take coaching and feedback and implement it we might have people here that have never been in sales. Okay, who have never worked in sales here? Raise your hand. Does that mean I would never hire you? No. That means you wanna be here in sales, right? You wanna learn, but if you have the ability of taking coaching and implement it, I love that, right? Hard work, and you're gonna see, you know, her hard work and her story, how much she paid till she is today. My hard work, that is very important. And being humble, always, that gets you a long way. And in this industry, caring at the end result, and the end result is that we're gonna treat and change patients' lives. We're gonna change them. That's the difference between selling a piece of paper, and I'm not disrespecting the people that sell a piece of paper, okay? But you can sell this today and move with your life. But you can sell an implant today that you know that person is gonna walk because you were there guiding a doctor, you were selling the best technology. That's the end result. And I want people that wanna make an impact in the life of patients. What's the uh, what's the basis of your work? So what do you what fires you up? What are you fired about? Fired up about? I love waking up every morning and knowing that I work in a company that has great products for the patients, that cares about me as a professional, about my career growth, and then I can go back to my family in the night and say, hey, they taking care of me, my family, and the patients out there, uh, and a culture. I love a culture. And, and I'm gonna talk a little bit about the culture of my company as well. Do you notice a difference, generally speaking, in the way that you're perceived by physicians and you know, healthcare professionals as a pharmaceutical rep versus a device rep? Yes, great question. And depending where you go, right? In Puerto Rico, we develop so great relationships that the pharma reps, we, we will stay 20 minutes in the office talking to them. I know it's different here. But yes, yeah, the perception is uh, sometimes that pharma is more service or I'll sign here for samples. I think you can make the difference no matter the job you are, right? You can differentiate yourself. You go, pharma is a great job. The best training in sales I got in medical was from pharma in Pfizer a lot of years ago. I'm gonna say it because it's a lot, but a lot of years ago, it was one of the best trainings. And it's a great, it's a great, you can differentiate yourself against others. It's, it's about the person, it's about the greed. It's about providing value. And if you, if you feel you have the best product to sell in a pharmaceutical company, and you are super educated and you are super well trained, you're gonna make a difference in front of that doctor. And that doctor will not be able to make a difference 
between medical sales and pharma because they're gonna be talking about, what's your name? Melody. Marisa, anything you want to add? Yeah, I was just going to say access is influence, right? Like, you make the difference. If you build the relationship in the office, then they're going to want to keep you back 20, 30, 40 minutes versus a medical device rep. There's some really not so great medical device reps out there. So, really, the differentiating factor is you. Exactly. Every leader, manager, they have their different quotes, and, and these are some of the lessons and quotes from other leaders that for me forged my type of leadership. Now, Marisa's are different. Yours are different, right? It's what relates to your leadership style. So for me, Peter Drucker wrote, culture eats strategy for breakfast. This is a selling industry. You need to sell, okay? I need to sell. But if I sell under a bad culture and I try to strategize without having a culture in my team, we're not gonna sell or we're gonna sell just today, not in the long term. Leadership is not about being in charge. Leadership is about taking care of those in charge. You're in charge. Military, you're taking care of the people you are in charge. It's the same in this industry. If you are a leader, you need to take care of your people. And that means loving them, but loving them in a way that when you need to give them the tough feedback, they're gonna accept it because it came from a good place. And sometimes the feedback you're gonna receive is not the one you wanna hear. Sometimes it's gonna be, hey, <laughs> you need to step it up or you need to do this. But when you have a leader that takes care of you and you've seen that throughout your years with that person, you're gonna take that feedback and you're gonna implement it and change. So what are you guys implementing in your culture to develop these leaders? I think it starts with building trust. I think our, every leader is different. So on my end, I start building trust for my RMs or when I was an RM with my TMs creating a culture with the team, creating a, a, a logo of the team, like she has her own logo or her own name for her region. Sometimes it's, you know, I used to give uh, the, the trophy of the month or the ring, I would develop like a ring with the, with the logo of the team. Uh, if you have a birthday or your wife is sick, send the, and it's not a checkbox, right? It's, it has to come from the heart, taking care of them, asking, asking how you're doing today before going into what are your sales? What are you doing to, to finish on track for the month? Because if you start like that, it always gonna be like that. And where you're gonna try to build a trust, the trust is already in, right? You need to ask about their family. You need to ask about their friends. You need to ask about the weekend, what happened, how it was. Build that trust, okay? And not only because of a check. Do we have one more? Ah, yes. Keep raising your hand. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> well, I gotta stop it from blocking my view. <laughs> I was just gonna say, so as a leader, you have to deal with you know the good moments and the bad moments. And if you have reps that maybe have unhappy clients, or you've been in that position yourself, how do you handle that? <laughs> That's a tough one. Uh, I had a I had a boss, a uh, manager, many years ago that always told me there's never complete happiness. Nunca hay felicidad completa. It doesn't matter. Right? You can pay one person 200K to start and maybe they want the 200 of one. They're not gonna be completely happy, never. In terms of the customer, they always say the customer has la razón or they're always right. I test that, right? I will always service the patients, okay? The customers are very important for us, but I draw the line when a customer disrespect my people, okay? And in this environment, and, and you know this, you know this for a fact, there's, there's a lot of personalities and we need to adapt to the personality. So one of the investments that the company does is called DISC Profile. So we figure out what personalities do you have, you're direct, you're more introverted, you're more extroverted, because our customers are gonna be the same. So we teach you how to adapt to those customers, but there's gonna be customers that are gonna be I'm not gonna say the word out loud, okay? <laughs> and those customers, and please. I would just say empathy, right? Like what's upsetting them, right? I, I think an art to all of this is disarming somebody. So like what, what's the problem and then what's the solution and then figuring out how to disarm them throughout the, the entire conversation. If you have empathy for somebody, I, I think it totally dismantles the entire conversation, depending on what the problem is, right? Uh, when you're in the heat of the moment in the OR, which you all will be, and um, there's a patient on the table. Time is of the essence and empathy and solutions. When you marry all that together, I think you 
you kind of know how to navigate that. And that comes with experience in your career journey too. Yeah. Good. At the end, like I mentioned, the patient, the customer adapting to it, and, and I mentioned, right, as a leader, and I, I think Boston Scientific feels the same because this is conversations we've had with lawyers and with different managers. The moment there's a customer that is drawing a line and disrespecting a rep or a manager, we draw the line. And we don't need to service that. We're going to service the patients. Could you speak to how much, if any, your, as you ascend sort of in position, how your day-to-day activities and responsibilities shift from in the field selling to managing people who are in the field? It's an evolution, right? You're not gonna, uh, you're gonna get promoted tomorrow to regional manager. You're not gonna be a regional manager with all the capabilities tomorrow, right? Everything that you did led you to this moment, but you, you are, it's continuing improvement. I've been a director of sales for one year and 10 months. <laughs> I still have a lot to learn. I learn up every week, every week I learn. I still get my feedback sessions with things I need to do better. And I listen and I implement them, okay? But at the end, in this industry, it's about, and I, I, I'm, I'm repeating it again, the empathy, caring about the patient, caring about the solutions that we're offering, hard work, and caring about people. And all of that is going to be transferable as you continue to grow in the organization. Because my job right now is to continue to care about the patients we're impacting, selling more, and taking care of the people that work on my team and I don't say, I don't like to say my team because it's mine, our team, right? To get them to the next level. My biggest, the best moment in my life is when I, I'm going to be able to say, Marisa, you're going to be my leader. You're gonna, I'm going to report to them. That, every time someone gets promoted on my team, for me, that's a super high. Now, it's a different high from the FSA that is just starting. Many of you are going to join the companies as a field sales associate, maybe. Inside sales, territory manager. You're not going to be thinking about who is promoted on your side. You're not going to be thinking about building your brand just by on a picture or social media. You're going to be out there hardworking, executing, winning, getting more patience, hitting your number, getting awards, and then the rest will come. Anything to add there? Yeah, I was going to say comparisons that people enjoy. Have you guys like heard that slogan before? Like it's true. Like don't compare yourself because, like, like you said, some of you may get titles: territory manager, field sales associate. You may be an individual contributor, but if you want to be in leadership one day, you're going to have to think about the masses to kind of answer your question, right? So whether you go from an individual or you go to, you know, leading half the country, um, you just always have to be thinking about that. Don't compare yourself to other people's journeys. It's your journey. So. Great point. This is a little bit about my career. I'm not going to go into all the details. I just wanted to, to know where I was 20 plus years ago. <laughs> So I did a bachelor's degree in marketing, uh, business and marketing. I did a master's in marketing as well. And when I was finishing college, there was a class or a, or a, a course in Puerto Rico called the pharmaceutical sales prep. So we're talking 25 years ago, maybe 22 years ago. And it's very similar to this, but for pharma reps, this is more on steroids now, right? We didn't have all the technologies we have. We didn't have scrubs but it was to show you how to sell to a doctor, to record videos on video sales presentations. How do you sell clinically? How do you service the patient? So very similar. So I received my, my degree, very proud of it, and I joined Pfizer. So what you're doing today is gonna be important for your full life and career, okay? The, the medical sales college, and I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna brag about it, your college because uh, I'm in Boston Scientific, but I need to bring, right? When I'm looking at the things that you are doing right now, learning how to sell clinical, hands-on, videos, selling, uh, 12 weeks, studying a lot, this is gonna force you a lot. And this is similar to what I did in that class that got me a job in Pfizer. And in Pfizer, I was from a pharma rep starting to a specialty rep to account executive. And I went to Wyatt Pharmaceutical as an account executive and two years after I joined Wyatt, Pfizer bought Wyatt. And people told me, huh, you're gonna get fired. You, you left Pfizer to go to Wyatt and now we're buying you. But no, I didn't. I, I, got, I really got separated because my job got eliminated, but Pfizer hired me back. And the story is always do the right things. Always please leave your doors open. You never know 
Life is a circle. You go on to one company today and you have to leave because of some reason. You leave everything open. You do the job always good and you never know when you can come back because life is it's very short and it's a circle. Uh, in 2011, like I mentioned to Roberto, I, I joined Latin America Boston Scientific. I started at Puerto Rico as a territory manager, then a regional manager, and started developing countries. So urology, which is the division that we work, was the smallest, the, the baby division. Nobody cared about urology. Everything was cardiology, cardiology, cardiology. So I was like, I want to join urology. That's what I want. I was selling Viagra, so I knew a lot about urology. So I started developing countries like Colombia, Costa Rica, Panama, became training for Argentina, for Brazil. All of these places that were not selling urology, that we had distributors. Today, I'm super happy that we all have direct force there. We have sales reps in every country. And I'm not saying it was because of me, but a little bit was because of the grind and working every day and traveling all over Latin America to achieve this. At one moment, I was overseeing urology endoscopy neuromod and cardiovascular as well for distributors because we used to sell to distributors. And in 2017, an opportunity came to relocate and, and I, I came to the US. They called me to be a training manager and I said, well, I'll apply for it if I can stay living in Puerto Rico. I'm not gonna move from an, from an island, never. I will never move, never, zero. And they say, okay, go for it. During the process, I met a person that he knows, Gavin Phillips, and Gavin told me, no, I have a position for you in Texas as free and manager. I'm like, no way. That's not happening. I say, thank you for that time. And he said, don't say no to me on a Friday. Uh, let's wait till Monday. And on Saturday, he sent me a long email about the benefits, about more exposure, about more career growth. And here I am, five years later. <laughs> so became an RM and director of sales a couple of years afterwards. And I don't regret it. Has it been easy? I left family, I left every friend, I left a complete culture, I left a complete language, and you're getting, I think, the best of me today, Monday, because Mondays are bad for me, because I've been speaking Spanish all weekend, right? <laughs> so Mondays are like, oh my God, maybe you are already saying, what the hell is he saying? <laughs> but I don't regret it on a, on a career-wise. What was the major change for you going from a rep, a sales rep being in the field, to adapting to different personalities. Not everyone is like you. And that's one of the things that we, that, and that's a great question, right? Because you go in, maybe you are a, a, a hard work, green mentality. I don't care about family. I just care about a paycheck. I just care about waking up every morning, every morning and hitting my number. But then you have people in your team that are all different, different cultures, different personalities, different family backgrounds. If you continue with the same mentality that, that you had, what got you here is not gonna get you there. So we need to adapt in that, but that's a good question. And that's, you know, we, we don't tend to change personalities of person. What we train in Pfizer, in Boston Scientific and in Pfizer in the past, with different classes into, you know, how to adapt, how to learn about other personalities to be able to adapt to them. That's a good question. Boston Scientific is in more than 40 countries now. Boston Scientific in Latin America, for example, we have seven direct offices. So we have a, an office in Brazil, an office in Argentina, an office in Mexico, Puerto Rico covers the Caribbean. We have the MIA area, which is Middle East and Africa. We have Asia Pacific. We have uh, the Euro part. We have the US, which is the main revenue in Boston Scientific, but we continue to expand to all the countries. I think we are in a better moment in history right now, but there's always, and that's a tough question, right? Because it depends on, what I can tell you is that I was a majority in my country and I became a minority just by taking a flight, okay? And everything changes from how they perceive you or how they see you or why is, is this person, and I'm not gonna say this to bash on any country in particular, but every country has different 
ways of getting a job in US, right? You can get a visa, you can get a permit, you can get a green card. And I was part of the US being in Puerto Rico, but they still ask me, where are you from? Did you have a visa to get here? You are an RM here, or why are we getting someone from Puerto Rico when you have so much talent in the US? I've had people write on me, hey, remember that the Italian in the US is better than the Italian in Latin America. And this is 20th century, right? So, but again, the bueno somos más. The good, we are more. Okay? And you're here to learn a lot about adapting to other cultures of world, other people, how you sell to the customers. Our customers are not all the same. We, right now we have 60 million Hispanics in the US. 14% of the population is Hispanic. So the doctors are looking like that. Okay? We need to adapt. To and the literature that we use, the brochures that we use, the way of selling, the marketing, everything needs to adapt. So we're better. One of the things that we're doing, and now that you asked me, and I'm gonna to touch on that, Boston Scientific partner with Medical Sales College to provide diversity, equity, and inclusion scholarships this year. At the beginning of the year, our cardiology division offered six scholarships to black African-American candidates across the US. Of those six, four were hired and the other two were offered a job in Boston Scientific. Uh, at the end, the six are in the industry right now. Why? because we need to impact the metrics of the patients and customers that look like us. So when I saw that, I was like, I, I want to do the same. So a couple of months ago, you know this, I said a couple of months, it's been like six months, but a lot of work, we developed the first scholarship for Hispanic and Latinos across the US. And after a long moments of interviews, we offered five scholarships to Hispanics and Latinos across the US. We have Kobe in, in, in Chicago that graduated two weeks ago. We have Ryan Portillo in Dallas, who is in class right now, in Houston, in Dallas. We have Jacob de la Peña in Houston. We have Amanda here. We have Roberto here. That makes me proud. Those are the impacts that Boston Scientific allows me to do and allows us to work, to impact beyond a number, to impact what we're seeing out there. How do we help people? How do we impact the metrics? How do we touch more patients? Do you plan on expanding that to other minority groups as well? That's a great question. So one of the things we're considering is uh, vets, right? How can we do a scholarship for vets? How can we do a scholarship for moms that work, right? How can we use uh, for the Asian population, for the LGBTQ plus and others? So we want to do more. And this is just, I think we're just scratching the, the, the surface. It's a great question. And I'm definitely not going to read all of this, but. Um, what advice can you give to a rep to who would, um, would like to maybe self-educate or learn on ways to better interact with minorities or people of other cultures? Read. And, like, there's so many programs out there. There's so many books on, on inequalities and equalities. Marisa is one of the biggest champions we have on inequalities in the company. Marisa sent me a, a, a text message the other day. I'm gonna be very, I'm very transparent and candid here. She sends me a message, hey, this is the organization of prostate urology. We are urology only. We only have 45 black persons. That's 8%, that's bad. She sent me a text, oh, okay, let's, let's, let's look to improve that. What do we need to do? Okay, let's connect with our regional manager who is doing a program that is called uh, the ARCH, they did the ARCH program. So Boston Scientific offers a lot of that. I think at the end, it's not only to be part of it, it's to sustain that. Because once we get all the Latinos, while we get all the vets, how do we keep them in the organization? Your life experiences have been different than any others that are not vets. So how do we adapt to you? That's what we're still learning. We're still learning every day. And I make mistakes every, every month about how to adapt to different cultures. But I think there's a lot of programs out there and the companies right now are more open to that. And many of the companies that you all will join when you finish this program will have programs in place to help you with that. You wanna add something? No, that was beautifully said. I was gonna say um, ERGs. ERG, leader, oh, that's a good uh, Ola, which is an ERG. I'm the leader of Young Professionals Network and my co-lead is Brittany Honor. You're gonna learn this about both of us. We're both very granular, we're both very vulnerable, so like we can talk about all this stuff, right? Because it's our day-to-day -day lives for all of us. Um, she is a black female. She is one of four black females in Raleigh Public Health. So she is also a member of Boost, 
which is our African American ERG, and I am also a member of WLA. So to answer your question, attach, if that's something you're passionate about, attach yourself to people who are also part of other ERGs or organizations, because you learn from them. Like, I learn so much from her. I'm passionate about certain things. She opens my mind to certain aspects and avenues within the corporation and the organization, and we both double down on it. So just latch yourself on to other people that you have a similar passion to. Oh, ERG, so it's yeah. employee resource group, which I'm actually gonna to touch on in one of my slides. I, I, think talk about gonna, OLA. I think we're gonna to touch on it, but employee resource group, and every company has different. We have like 13 employee resource group, which for example, I lead the field chapter. So we have OLA, which is Hispanic Organization for Leadership and Advancement, or Leadership Achievement, sorry. And a few years ago, I launched the field sales chapter because we have a lot of, you know, we're so busy in the field, we cannot be in calls every week. So the idea is how do we increase representation of Latinos and Hispanic in leadership positions? I took it a little bit further. I started talking about how do we impact our physicians that are Hispanic and Latinos, right? How do we talk to them and to their patients? Because it's different. The Latino, yeah, they want to talk to their mom, abuela. They bring everyone into the, into, the, into the appointment. Everyone has a voice. We need to talk to them as well. So we've been doing round tables with different physicians from across the US that are Hispanic to talk to them about, ask them questions. So we have the Boost Initiative, which is uh, uh, another great program that is gonna be to target more and bring more black and African-American candidates into Boston Scientific and to development. We have the Pearl with Asian, we have the Vet ERG, we have the Pride ERG, and we have a lot more like those. And they help us. I know you mentioned Yes. And how would you like recommend going about doing that? That's a great question. I think, like I mentioned at the beginning, once you join a company, and I tell this to every new hire in the organization, you want to grow, right? You're, you're thinking about your brand. The first, the first year is to focus on that execution, right? Or focus on that territory planning, focus on learning the job. Now, while doing that, you need to, there's, in our company, it's called the IDP, my development. How do I develop myself? What are the capabilities that I need to develop to get to the next role? So I want to impact international markets, right? So, so I want to say, okay, by December 31st, 2023, I want to go into a role to help the Latin America countries because of my expertise and help develop them. I will be doing this by asking the sales training team to use me in those markets. I'm gonna have one-on-ones with David Soler about the Latin American culture, whatever. By the end of the year, you're gonna develop some skills that are gonna get you there. Now, to answer your question more directly, there's opportunities in every country, in every company that to help impact others by sales training maybe. You know, we have Andres Apollo in Miami, who is a rep that might talk to one of these classes soon. He helps us in Latin America, right? I have one in, in Memphis right now that speaks German. He's gonna help us in Germany launching a product. So every time we're launching a product outside US, we're looking for people that know the culture, that know the languages, and that's a good way to raise your hand. Thank you. You're welcome. So I have another question. So yep. in your hiring process, are you asking those questions specifically, like do you have international training management? Do you, have you done these uh, like specific roles for other countries? No, it depends on the position. It depends on the resume if I see it. But I think that's the moment in the interview process that you highlight every strength that you have that will differentiate yourself against the others, one, right? You have one hour to impress that person. The interview is very important. And in that hour, you're going to be asked to answer a lot of questions. It's important that when you have the chance, you need to talk about those experiences and how those experiences are going to help. I'm going to do an example of a, a we have a vet called Carson. Carson was promoted to a strategic manager role and then business partner last year. And many people said, he's been here like three years only. He was a clinical specialist, territory manager. And now that he fought against a lot of people for that position that had 10, 15 years of sales experience. Yeah, but Carson led an army into battle. Carson led people fighting for the country and strategic brought people back alive. 
and help complete a mission. Those are the things that are transferable skills to any job, right? And those are the things you will need to highlight in that interview process. I'm not gonna read all of this. These are some of the awards throughout my career, and it's not to brag, it's that you can still get it, right? And when I look at these awards, you all can fight for a Rookie of the Year soon. Every company has a Rookie of the Year award. I love that award. And I won it two times, one in Pfizer and one in Boston. I was the oldest rookie, I think, to won it because <laughs> I joined Boston. <laughs> but I still put it there number one, right? Uh, there's the Peak Club. She has like, I don't know, like a lot. Uh, they don't even fit here. But when you look at those awards in sales, I'm also very proud of being winning the 2021 Culture Award in my company, and that's global, of being nominated for the uh, Leader of the Year, Global Leader of the Year of Boston Scientific competing against, and again, not to brag, but those are the things that when I look back and I go to sleep, or when I, I'm gonna retire, when I look back, I wanna, what was the impact? Was it beyond a quarter? Yes, I think it is. 